Hello friends and family and welcome to the Global Pandemic Crippling Anxiety Fireside Chat. Um, I've encountered some folks recently who have actually had a very serious meditation practice for an extended period of time and chosen to leave it because they find themselves evaluating the the value of the meditation based on other people's experiences and other people's uh, seeming response to the meditation. In particular, uh, one fellow had quite a serious practice for a number of years and decided to quit. And his explanation was that he was finding experienced students and even teachers were not living up to his expectations of what an experienced meditator should be like, how they should behave, the way they should speak. And while I think that this is not necessarily a bad way to evaluate meditation techniques as we're choosing one for ourselves, and finding out whether or not the practice of meditation itself is valuable and if the practice of meditation, then which practice of meditation. However, it is extremely difficult for us to formulate absolute opinions about other people's um, progress, as it were, um, along any axis. And it was actually around the same time when I, I met someone um, who had a serious practice, had a serious meditation practice, uh, and it happened to be a Vipassana practice, and I found myself making the same judgments. Um, he was a large fellow, and in general, um, as people adopt a more serious meditation practice, they tend to lose weight and find it easier to exercise. Um, and, uh, and this fellow was quite large and I thought to myself, oh, it was, well, maybe it just hasn't happened for him yet, despite he, the fact that he clearly spent a lot of time in meditation and um, attending courses. And uh, later on, he and I were engaged in a conversation and um, he happened to mention that he was going to the airport at the same time that I was. And so we shared uh, a cab to the airport and, um, or bus rather, a cab and a bus. And at the airport, he pulled out his identification to um, show the security guard at the entrance. And I was dumbfounded. Um, the man in the photo did not look anything like him. And the man in the photo was huge, absolutely huge. And he looked at me and laughed and he said, yeah, I know, I know, I, I used to be very heavy and I'm still losing weight. Vipassana has helped me a great deal, but there's a long way to go. And I caught myself in this position where I'd made a judgment based on one data point. And so I thought, oh, I, here's a data point. This man is overweight. Um, but that's not enough. It's not enough information. It's not enough data um, for us to actually evaluate how a person is changing over time. And his change over time happened to be that he was losing weight. He was losing a great deal of weight. He was healthier than he'd ever been in his entire life. But I couldn't see that because I was only comparing him to other meditators. I was comparing him to myself, and that's unfair. And when we examine other folks who are taking on a meditation practice or who have even had a meditation practice for a very long time, there's no way for us to really know where they began. 
and how far have they come and in what direction have they come. Um, an experienced meditator may still show negative emotions, they may still get angry, they may still get sad, but it's very hard to know how angry a person they were before they began meditating. How easily were they distracted before they began meditating? How sad and how often would they get sad before they started meditating? We can't really know. And so the way to evaluate this is really to watch someone you know within the scope of their own life to see how their meditation practice is affecting them and if they hold on to it. It's the same as a healthy diet or healthy exercise. It doesn't help if you're not actually engaged in the practice. So going for one retreat or practicing for one year and then giving it up is no different than running for one year and then giving it up for that year. You may be marginally healthier, but beyond that, it's hard to say what benefits you receive. And they're certainly far less than you would receive if you continued your running practice or your meditation practice or anything else of that sort. So I would encourage you to do one of two things. Uh, first of all, you can evaluate someone else on a trajectory. What is the arc that they're following with their practice? And how long is the arc? How steep is the arc? And how much are they growing? But more importantly, you can evaluate yourself. So you can see sincerely and as objectively as possible, evaluating the changes that you've made. You can see how a practice affects you and you will have to be patient in the same way that you have to be patient with exercise. You don't go running every day for a month and lose a bunch of weight. You don't recover from lifelong asthma or um, other bad habits like smoking in one month or two months or even one or two years if these are truly lifelong habits that you've had. It takes time. But when you're observing yourself, you may even come to this point where you feel that little is changing. But if you're honest with yourself, if you look back at the ways that you've behaved in the past, the ways that you felt in the past, you can compare and contrast to that. And you'll see what benefit, if any, you're gaining from any particular meditation practice. So I would encourage you to avoid looking too seriously at other people and to avoid judging them too harshly based on uh, a single meeting or even an extended meeting. Um, take a look at the people within your life and more importantly, take a look at yourself to see how meditation is benefiting you, if at all. That's all for today. We again won't be doing a 10 minute meditation practice together. I would encourage you to download the dhamma.org app. I will link to it and uh, the instructions will show you how to download audio clips, which include an introduction, 15 minutes long, and a 10 minute guided meditation, which will help you um, with your own Anapan meditation that you can practice for any length of time that you like and um, in any circumstance that you like. You don't necessarily need to be sitting down, eyes closed, but um, your daily practice would be that. All right, everyone, I hope you're taking care of yourselves. We will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.